What's up everybody, my name is Scott. You're watching Kentucky Ballistics and I'm super excited about today's video because today I get to have fun with not one, but two awesome revolvers. First up is the Smith & Wesson Model 610. This is a six shot revolver chambered in 10 millimeter. You have double action or single action. You have adjustable rear sights, a six and a half inch barrel. And as you can see, it is stainless steel. Up next, we have the Smith & Wesson Model 629. This is also a six shot revolver, except this one is chambered in 44 Magnum. Again, you have a six and a half inch barrel. You have adjustable rear sights, single action or double action. And of course, it is stainless steel. So as you can see, the Model 610 and the Model 629 are pretty much identical except for the caliber they're chambered in. So today we're gonna have some fun with both these revolvers and see how they stack up against each other. Okay, so I have us a shootsteel.com steel target set up about 10 yards down range. Let's get loaded up and get started. Let's start out with the 629. I wanna start out with 44 Magnum. So today we have some Underwood ammo. These are 44 Magnum, 245 grain full metal jackets. I'm sure these will have some pop to them. Let's try it out. All right. Feels good. Was that five or six? I lost count. Let's see. All right. I think I think that's the last one. Yeah, that was the last one. That's a smooth shooter. Okay, we're gonna have to try out some one-handed shooting now. So something else that's cool about 44 Magnum, other than the fact that it's 44 Magnum, is you can also shoot 44 Special out of it. So I've got some 44 Special. Let's see how it handles those. But you have to shooting 44 Magnum, 44 Special, not gonna feel like much. All right, I got six loaded up. Let's smack that steel a few more times. Oh yeah, that's... That is very comfortable shooting after shooting 44 Magnum. <laughs> I'm gonna mix them up now. Let's do 44 Special, 44 Magnum. You should be able to tell a difference in recoil here. The question is, what's gonna go off first? That was definitely 44 Special. <laughs> okay, we'll let that cool down for a minute. Let's move on to the Model 610. How about some Underwood ammo, 200 grain full metal jackets? Okay, I got six shots loaded up. Let's try it out. That's nice. I think that was six. I really need to start counting when I shoot. I counted that time. I know for a fact that that was six. So the Model 629 can shoot 44 Magnum and 44 Special. Well, the Model 610 can shoot 10 millimeter, but you can also shoot 40 Smith & Wesson. Some people say you can shoot 40 Smith & Wesson out of your 10 millimeter semi-automatic pistol, but it's not a good idea. I'm guilty of doing it once or twice, but I can tell you it's not the smartest thing to do. The head spacing is different and you can end up tearing up your gun. With the Model 610, it is perfectly safe to shoot 40 Smith & Wesson and 10 millimeter out of this revolver. So now let's take a few shots with some 40 Smith & Wesson. I haven't even tried out the single action on these revolvers because the double action is pretty smooth. So by the way, the Model 610 comes with moon clips and you will need these. 10 mil is a semi-automatic cartridge and does not have a rim. So when it's in the cylinder, you can see it will not eject, but with the moon clips, it will. Otherwise, you can just pluck it out with your thumb. And with 40 Smith & Wesson, you cannot shoot it without the moon clips because when it goes down in the cylinder, you can see that it sinks down into the cylinder. So now I'm loaded with 40 Smith & Wesson and 10 millimeter. Let's see if we can see a difference in recoil. That was 40. Yep, definitely was 40. 40. 10 mil. Now I got six shots of 10 mil in my left hand and six shots of 44 Magnum in my right hand. I 
that's a whole lot of fun right there. And you can tell there's a pretty big difference between the 10 mil and the 44 Magnum. So a long time ago, I did 10 millimeter versus 44 Magnum. The only problem with that video is my barrel lengths were not the same. Well, today we have a 10 millimeter and a 44 Magnum that both have six and a half inch barrels. So how about we do a quick little rematch and see what kind of results we get. Okay, we got five water jugs set up. We're gonna start out with 10 millimeter and we're gonna be loaded up with some Underwood ammo, 180 grain jacketed hollow points. Got a little bit wet. <laughs> okay, we went through one water jug, two water jugs, three. Looks like we punctured number four, but we stopped in number three. Well, maybe not. Hmm. It might be in there, it might not. Here's another piece in number four. I'm not seeing it on the ground either. I can't believe I can't find that bullet. There's just fragments everywhere. Ugh. May scoot back a little bit, got a little wet last time. So now we got 44 Magnum and we're loaded up with some Underwood ammo, 240 grain jacketed hollow points. Maybe we caught it. Okay, so this time we went through one, two, here's number three. Looks like we went through the back, went into number four, and then into number five. Looks like we may have stopped at number five. Did we actually catch the round this time? Oh, how about that? So there's the lead core and what's left of the jacket. Whoa. <laughs> now let's shoot a few cinder blocks. Okay, again, we're going to start out with 10 mil. We're going to be loaded up with some 200 grain full metal jackets. Got to get level with these blocks. Let's see what our results are. Okay, so the 10 mil punched through the front and it does not look like it made it through the back. And there is the round. Now let's see how 44 Magnum does, loaded up with some 245 grain full metal jackets. Goodness. <laughs> Obviously the 44 Magnum punched through the front and the back of that cinder block, but it did not damage the second cinder block. And here's what's left of the bullet. And last but not least, we're gonna shoot a piece of steel. This is mild steel and it's a fourth of an inch thick. All right, I have that at a slight angle. So if we have a ricochet, it should just ricochet right into the dirt. Again, first up is 10 millimeter with some 200 grain full metal jackets. I think we made it through, I'm not sure. No, nope, we sure didn't. So here's where we hit with the 10 millimeter. We have a dent in the steel, but we did not make it through the steel. And now for the 44 Magnum with the 245 grain full metal jackets. Hmm, I hit really close to an old spot. I may shoot that one more time. Okay. That was better. I'm more comfortable with that one. <laughs> 44 Magnum didn't make it through either. So there's our first hit, which I didn't like that because I was really close to this hole here. There's our second hit. We did not make it through the steel, but you can see a difference in these dents. This is the 10 millimeter dent and the 44 Magnum dent is a lot deeper. Hmm. Can 
you guess which one was 10 mil and which one was 44 Magnum? <laughs> Well, that's it for today's video. I had a lot of fun with the Smith & Wesson Model 629 and 610. They're both smooth shooters, pretty accurate, and they both pack quite a punch. Don't forget to support the channel by checking out Kentucky Ballistics Clothing. There's a link in the description down below. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure and give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed to Kentucky Ballistics, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell for notifications. And while you're at it, share today's video with a friend. Also, be sure to check me out on Patreon, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links to all those can be found in the description down below or on my website kentuckyballistics.com again my name is scott thank you so much for watching kentucky ballistics and i'll see you next time